I'll apologise now for the small snoring sound. It's the dog who's very bored with watching me do videos. This is a short video, um, mainly for university students. Doesn't matter what course you're on. Uh, it may apply also to business people who are having to write longer reports um, and anybody else that's got involved in writing things uh, and they're looking for clarity. So hopefully it'll help a few of you like that. I'll be talking about how to construct a fairly long string of words, an essay, something similar, and then how to analyse it afterwards. So I hope it makes sense. If it makes sense, don't forget to give me a comment, and the comment thing's down at the bottom, but uh, I'm sure you all know that. So, over to a whiteboard now, I think. Hello again. Um, today, I'm going to talk, just briefly, for students again, because I'm already getting a few questions from students about how to write essays and um, the best way of getting things done. The most important thing when you're writing an essay is to remember that it's the editing that counts. So once you've written out your basic flow, you've got a, an argument going through the essay as far as you're concerned, um, write it all out and then, although it's fine to edit to an extent on a computer screen or on a tablet or anything, you never quite get all of the typos and all the errors. And the reason is that when you're reading something that you typed yourself, up here you're expecting to see a certain string of words and when you read them on the screen your mind interprets what it's reading and starts throwing in the words that you expect so you miss um, their T-H-E-I-R instead of T-H-E-R-E and all of the other types of simple slip-ups. The only way that works best, um, and I've tried this many times in the last 20 years of writing and every other author I know has the same thing, is to read it all aloud. If you've got a 3,000 word essay it may take a bit of time but look on the bright side, it's not a 130,000 word uh, novel. Um, and if, if you read everything aloud there's some sort of um, connection that forms because you're looking at it, you're trying to interpret it in your brain and you're in involving your mouth as well. If there's anything that's wrong you will stumble over it and for some reason it, it always works with every author I know that as you're reading you'll start um, stammering, slipping up and it's when you get to that point go back and study that sentence really carefully and make sure that you that it does say what you expect because all too often you'll be missing out on things. So the most important thing is read it aloud when you've written it. Then check your flow. Now if you've got an essay often people get very confused about how things should go. So let's just look at an essay as a series of paragraphs. You've got an introduction and then you've got different stages leading through to a conclusion. Doesn't matter how many paragraphs there are here, let's just say that that's the conclusion there. Now very often when you look at a printed essay it's quite difficult to see, when, especially when you've written it, exactly where the flow's going. Right. So, here's a string of paragraphs, say, and mm -hmm. then if you write a one-sentence synopsis alongside each one, you can see more clearly how the flow is actually progressing through to, does it actually then take you down to your conclusion? Now, to an extent, this is a principle that everyone should use for every essay anyway, because when you're writing your essay, I had one student who came to me who had forgotten that the main question of the essay was to compare and contrast two books. Um, I, f I forget what the, what the precise question was. He produced a superb essay that was an analysis of one book. He completely forgot that the question said two books. So it's always useful. I recommend that um, when you're writing your essay make sure you've got the question in front of you and all the time while you're writing try to imagine that if you had to summarize the whole of your argument the whole of your essay in one sentence what would that sentence be uh, apart from anything else when you're trying to explain to somebody of the Royal Literary Fund it helps them if you can summarize what the whole point is but then go through and summarize each paragraph and the reason why that helps is that the whole concept of writing an essay, the whole concept of developing an argument, um, really goes back to early philosophy. 
And early philosophy worked very much the same with mathematics as it did for um, developing an argument in a literary format. So if you can imagine that you've got some sort of mathematical formula and you have to go through and develop that formula to explain um, and come down to an answer in a series of equations. This is actually doing the same thing. You're starting off with a proposition, you're developing that proposition using PED ideally, what is it, um, uh, point, you bring up the point, you explain the point, you expand on the point and you develop the theme. Um, you're doing the same thing through the whole of this essay as following a mathematical equation. You're saying, here's the start point, carry on through this and therefore the answer must be that. What you must do at all points is keep to very simple language. Keep it as straightforward as you can because what you're trying to do is have clarity to, de to demonstrate to the marker that you understand what you're talking about. All too often I see students who throw in words that are polysyllabic just because they think it looks good or they try to write in an academic style which to them means they've got one sentence that takes up seven or eight lines in a paragraph. Both of those are killers. If you've got a sentence that long, your marker will not be able to understand what you're trying to say. Very likely you won't either. If you've got words that you're not sure about, don't use them. Use simple words because the simpler the language, the easier it is to get your point across. Sometimes you get into a paragraph like this and it develops into an unholy mess. If you find that, don't panic. Bring the paragraph up on your computer, in Word or whatever it might be, and you'll see that each sentence will run on for a set number of lines. And what you can do is break out that paragraph into each individual sentence. So wherever you get to a full stop, put in a carriage return, and then you'll end up with a series of sentences with a full stop after it. And what you're trying to do is get to the meaning of each of those sentences. When you see the sentence in the middle of a whole jumble of text, it's difficult to make sense of it. When you see them with a line in between each of these sentences, so they're developing to look like little individual paragraphs, you can see what that sentence is saying. You can see if it flows to that. You can see if that flows to that. And you can tell it's exactly the same as doing this approach. You can see if that that um, paragraph, that one sentence synopsis flows to there, or if it doesn't flow at all to there. If that's the case, it may be you need to insert another paragraph there to develop from there to there, logically. Sometimes it can mean that actually this is completely useless for the argument you're trying to develop, and you can ditch that completely and have that following round to a new paragraph here, say, which will then go straight to the conclusion. There's a number of ways of looking at this, but the main thing is, whatever you're writing, keep it simple, keep the language straightforward, don't try to baffle people by sounding academic, write in a manner which you are happy with, um, and try... This will sound terribly scathing, but just imagine that you're trying to explain all, all of this concept in language that a younger brother or sister would understand. Imagine you're trying to explain it to an 11 or, tw or 12 year old. That way you'll be getting to the essence of what you're trying to say, the marker will be able to get to the meaning that you're trying to put across much more straightforwardly and they'll be able to give you better marks because they understand what you're getting at. So, in short, read everything aloud, make sure that when you read it aloud it makes sense that way, Check your flow, go through, make a one-sentence synopsis of each of the paragraphs in your essay, all the way through to the conclusion. Um, if you've got a paragraph that doesn't seem to follow logically and make sense, break out each sentence into a separate paragraph in their own right for that paragraph, and check where the flow is. Make sure that it does flow from one sentence to another, um, and then reconstitute the paragraph, obviously, at the end of it. And... Make sure you avoid any sort of attempt at sounding academic or too clever, because usually that's when you'll fall over. And that's it. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. Hopefully um, 
this will help a few people. But uh, all I can say is I'm going to be trying to produce a few more um, little talks for university students, school students or business people. Um, if you want to keep in touch, there's a comment section underneath. There's the opportunity of subscribing to the channel. Um, this channel is all about tips on writing. Look it up on YouTube and uh, you can follow all the rest of the videos when they come through. And apart from that, like it, share it, um, and any questions, any comments you want to put in, put them on the comments line underneath and I'll look forward to answering them. I do answer all of the questions and comments when as they come through, so I'll be happy to hear from you in the future, hopefully. Next time I do a video, I'm going to have a bottle of beer or a glass of cider. I've just decided. I think it's necessary. Thanks a lot for listening. Take care.